a woman's not approaching a man like that, then a man's not the, a man's not as likely to act out with a violent response because he feels he feels respected. At the end of the day, it comes back to that conversation about the importance of a man feeling respected within a relationship. Do you think that these male dominated spaces, do they actually perpetuate more violence being enacted on women? Yeah, I spoke on that earlier. I, I started the conversation off by saying yes, because I said weak men. I, I'm not saying men who are within themselves and who are confident within themselves. I'm saying weak men, men who has felt like women has dominated them for a long time. Um, a lot of these platforms, I think the stuff that they say sometimes can give men the fuel that they need to enact violence against against women. So I, that's my stance from it. So, so my whole thing about this is about when men say things. So when we talking about what men say things do, are these men that's actually talking, are they saying go out in that and actually do DV on women or what no. is it that actually drives? No, what's no. The driving force? No, they they're not telling you to go out and and for say do this, do these type of things. I think this is what the men, the weak men need to hear that um oh some of these women just by you know the the red pill type community feel that you a man should be a, should dominate a woman, so to speak, and should not take stuff from from women. So at the end of the day, a lot of men hear this and when um they would go out into the streets. Like I said, use an example of speaking to a woman, just wanting to get her, get to know her. And she embarrassed him in some type of way. He feels like, Hey, I'm the man. You can't disrespect me. You know, this is, I'm, I'm, um, I know my value. I know my worth. So you can't say this. So in a lot of time that in return, that can enact a, a violent, um, transaction between that, so that man and that woman. So, so you speaking of red pill rage is what you're talking about. Did you at any point in time have any of you all experienced red pill rage in your life? Just like because let me explain red pill red pill rage before we go yeah. any further. Red pill rage is when you actually go through a traumatic event with a woman, and then you come out and you're angry against women, and you just like f all women. So like Mr. T went through his first divorce just say that that divorce ended real badly to where she took half his income half his money and his kids and he still can't see his see his kids bg if you going through some something similar did you go through any periods of your life to where you had red pill rage i mean that's just prior to even being in a, a marriage right it just depends in dealing with certain women in a certain demographic um who were black um, but anyway, so when you're dealing with them, it's a different energy. Um, and so it's it's dismissiveness, right? Because, you know, you have playful banter. But I think there is not a true appreciation for a brother unless he's at a certain level and stature in life. That stature would be somebody like Pastor Life, you know what I'm saying, Amari, you know, like. But if you got a, a brother with an edge and he has the gift of gab and he's out there, that's good on the front end, right? But then you'll see the dismissiveness from a woman when she feels she has a better option. And so it takes a man to be very strong to not be offended by that, right? And that's why I see a lot of guys go um, through the rat race. Oh, I need a faster car, right? And then, you know, I need um, more money that I could throw up in the club and make it rain and do all this so everybody can see me. So it's a need for validation. And so when a woman cannot affirm a man with her words and she minimizes him and she does it in a way where he's embarrassed, all he knows is to lash out, whether it's verbally or through acts of violence. So unfortunately, I would say those are triggers. And then there are additional triggers with words, ban, you know what I'm saying, pan. You know, we, we always have those are acronyms. And any brother knows when you call a pussy a Negro, a uh, a, a a dumb a negro a broke a negro just ban pan anything in those Speaking syllables right experience, there correct guys lose <laughs> it but it's even what other guys call that that's when you see the highest level of violence if you say man chill out dude you tripping a guy can live with that but if you call him a band 
once you put that a B A N, oh, it's it's gonna violence is gonna ensue. And so there those are certain triggers that we have to mature and get past because we know people are trying to get a rise out of us. And so women are the best of knowing how to hit a man below the belt. And so until we can control our emotions, but, we'll all be simple. But, but what, think about that. Let me ask the question: What is it she gets out of hitting you below the belt? What 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 purpose does that serve? How does that make the relationship better? In her mind, she feels now she's minimized you because there's this whole thing when you think about culture is whether it's from um, biblical right with, with churches where the man is the leader, and so the way to challenge that is to hit him below the belts, right? Make his ball small, damage him, make him feel little <laughs> as a guy because now it's Wait, saying make his that ball hey. Small? Hey, yeah, because that's why the whole I wear the pants now, all these terms, if you have balls, I have balls too. So I'm a woman, I wear the pants, I'm modern, I get out here, we're equal. It's to minimize the impact of a man. Because the thing is, true leadership is you walk side by side, we can instill good qualities in one another and we can make an informed decision one another. And certain things, I'm going to make a decision um, exclusive to you because you trust me to already exemplify the ability to have those decisions. But women don't always get to that level right they're mad and it's like who oh you think you run this now like no baby i was just giving a suggestion oh you think you better than me like no baby i just want to do this together when you hear those triggers guys hit the heels running because that's somebody who's now trying to validate her position in a relationship and if if it starts as that and then it begins to minimizing when she doesn't agree with your leadership I think it boils down to to actually sum all that up. When we look at the history of women, men have always been stronger, more brutal in nature. So women had to find some way to combat that. So they became a lot more devious, and uh, and they actually attacked men that way. They had to be a lot more subconscious about. It. They had to be a lot more practical and pragmatic about how they actually get back at men so they learn how to manipulate men a lot better than men can with women because men are stronger physical. And, and a lot more brutal. So they had to learn how to play the field that way. So I, to me, I think women should be far better than men than politics because of that because of that particular nature of their whole character. So that's just a sum of what he was saying. But, I, but there was one study right here that All Father said. He pointed out this right here. So I want to ask you all about this. And Minister Amari, I saw what you said, sir. So you are feel, yeah. feel free to dip out anytime you want to. A Harvard medical study already showed that DV was initiated 70% more by women than men. In fact, the leading demographic in both heterosexual and lesbian relationship were BW black women so saying all that what are you all thoughts on this particular subject right now and i think cb smith is back with us yeah i'm here yeah so so con considering that what he said that we got to take it for face value so we'll just say that this number that this is right so when, when we talk about the our space in cor in correlation with this particular study do you think that black men do you think it's being do you think it's propaganda that's being pushed that black men are uber like that are uber aggressive and actually committing dv against women at, at, at this astounding rate no i don't think it's propaganda i think i think it's culture our Explain, culture sir. our culture is our culture is broken um and you know whether whether you want to whether you want to talk about western culture or whether you want to winnow it down to black culture either way it's broken and the evidence is in all in all of these stories right uh it comes out time and time and time again here here within our culture we're acting out violently against our women um when you look at when you look at other cultures you know the women the women they are much more submissive and they would never they would never use those type of epithets that uh that bg was talking about and so when a woman's not approaching a man like that then a man's not the a man's not as likely to act out with a violent response because he feels he feels respected at the end of the day it comes back to that conversation about the importance of a man feeling respected within a relationship um before you get too deep in a relationship though when you see those signs it's very very telling there's there's your uh there's your exit there's your way out you know because now you know what you what you're going to have to be contending with you now you know what it is that you're going to be up against and if you recognize those red flags you'll run and you'll run fast <laughs>